Hey fans, Bob's Barn Workshop here. So what are we going to do today? Well, let's do a little troubleshooting. I already fixed this, but I want to let you know with the steps that I have. It's going to mow the lawn today. Got on the tractor. electronic relay driven servo that starts the blade. I figured it was an electronics problem. So what we need to do is get that switch out and we're going to test that switch. All right. I just used a screwdriver, pried a lot. You have to squeeze those little pinchy things in the bottom of the switch. They're always a pain. But I ended up getting pulling the wire off the bottom of the switch and got the switch out. Now, what do we do to test this? Hmm. Well, being in electrical engineering as a career for 35 years, I'm pretty adept at this. For, for those of you who are not so familiar, I have right here nothing but a simple continuity light. When you touch the, you can see the the light bulb light up here. Really basic test tool. So this switch has a row of common connections on one side, normally closed on these two, normally open are therefore the contacts in the middle which means when the switch is off these should be normally closed which means we should get a continuity light through the those. So we're going to test that. That says normally closed. Oh, lights on for that. Lights off in the center. We'll turn the switch on. That went off. The normally open went on. That switch works. We move it to the next position. Normally closed. Yes, the light is on. Test it to the center one. That one's off. Turn the switch on. Center one now lights. The normally closed opened. Only leaves one more switch. So, this stupid is a cheap Harbor Freight tester that I got on light clearance. It shows open right now, which is how it should be. Turn the switch on. Oh, still shows open. Doesn't light. I'm touching the, the thing through here. Doesn't light in either position, which means that is the section of the switch that is bad. So what do we do? Not having a spare switch handy, I located the two wires on the connector. Oh, by the way, and always disconnect your battery, which I did take the ground side, the black wire off your battery. That way when you hit the chassis, if you should hit your chassis with the wrench when you're taking the ground wire off, you won't get a big spark. So what did I do? I traced it out and found that that the blue and the red wire here are the two wires to go to that section of the switch. So all I did is I just stripped a little insulation off I had a couple of short pieces of wire. I ran them up through the hole. And plugged in the switch back in. Temporarily shove the switch back in the hole. Now let's see what happens. Pretty short video today, but hey, something that I had to do. Now if you listen carefully, you should be able to hear the blade start up.
So I was able to get my lawn mowed. Pretty much a simple solution for today, but a little uh, troubleshooting on a electrical circuit. Now you don't have to worry about getting shocked on a 12 volt car or our lawn tractor battery circuit. The only thing you have to worry about is the battery has a lot of power and it'll burn wires and it'll melt wires because it has tons of current low voltage. So there's no voltage there that'll shock you, but the wires getting hot can burn you. The sparks could get in your eyes, that kind of a thing. That's the only danger you're at with low voltage circuits like a car battery. But uh, I'm going to order a new switch. But I had to mow the lawn, so I had to do a little jury rig here to make this work. All right, guys. I'm off for a week back up to Black Lake. Maybe we'll do something up there. See how those trees are supposed to be taking the rest of those trees down. Um, actually, tomorrow. Man, we're going to get up there late in the afternoon. Hopefully they're all done and cleaned up. Alright guys. God bless. Take care. Stay safe. Keep uh, the shiny side up and the greasy side down. You know, as they say. Take care. Next time.